Welcome to the Yorkshire Fitness Podcast with Gray and Mark Law of St John's Health and Fitness Wakefield and Dr Mark Helm of Leeds Beckett University where three Yorkshire folk take training signs to the gym floor. Hey up everybody, welcome back. Episode 6 of the Yorkshire Fitness Podcast. How good's that? We're rocking and rolling, aren't we boys? Hi. Um, Episode about twelve, really, isn't it? If you think about how many we recorded. Uh, yeah, it is actually. Yeah, we've we've yeah. actually got some stored up from lockdown. Which yeah. We haven't we haven't put live yet. We were, we were trialing them we'll out. Really we'll redo them. They were not that great. Well, we could just throw them on and just see what people think. Yeah, yeah, different course, topics. Yeah. But we were talking about lockdown quite a bit of time. We? Yeah, we were. Anyway, next subject. Uh, yeah, here we are. So episode six. Welcome back. I hope you've uh, if you've listened to any of other episodes, I hope you've enjoyed them. We've had a bit of feedback again. I know I said this every week, don't I? Um, bit of good feedback, get bit of not so good feedback <laughs> from some of them, but just about as presentation skills, chatting over each other a little bit, but kind of we were just saying before we came on there, that's just kind of how we are, that's kind of how we chat anyway, and that's what set this podcast what off, wasn't it? We used yes. to chat to each other in on in lockdown and Zoom, catch up on the latest research where hell when you were doing your PhD. Yeah. Kind of where it all started from, uh, and this is just us still just meeting up and chatting about different topics. Three boring blogs talking crap, really. Well. Boring Yorkshire yeah. blogs. <laughs> but the last yeah, so of all in a fitness. <laughs> <laughs> that last of a summer wine. Meets who's top who's Compo? What a what a, mate, what a podcast. Um, yeah. So yeah, so here we are. So last week's topic was on strength training. Let's just let's just brush over that really, really quickly. So. We wasn't trying to knock oh, uh, hit training or make out as if hit training was no good for you. I know we, we did really, but we've chatted about it afterwards. We did really focus on strength training last week, the benefits of strength. But hit training, we wasn't saying hit training is no good for you, etc. So that we, we can we can go back to that. We can have another day on it, can't we? Another session to, and talk about hit training as well. So we'll today talk about the benefits of hit training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So today's good. topic, we're going to talk about calories. <laughs> that is good. That's good as strength. Yeah. So today's topic yeah, yeah. is like you're <laughs> at the end. Yeah. That's how we'll end the podcast. But yeah, that's right. Anyway, so so we're going to talk about calories. You know, like some people really struggle that they understand the, the understanding of calorie counting, macronutrients, where the, what what they should do, uh, whether it's a, a weight loss program. You've gone a bit dark, you Elm. Have you done that on purpose? Yeah, I'm trying or to just our light. I'm get rid of the glare. All right, it's all right. That's that's fine, mate. Right um, so yeah, we're we're just going to chat about calories in general, aren't we? And kind of how to you know like how to utilize you know like talk about we'll call talk about calorie dense foods. You know like the calories are obviously very different. No, they're not. They're all the same. But there's the the way that you can get calories is very different. Um, so we need people need to understand it a little bit more. So we'll just kind of broach that subject, eh? Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think I think the yeah. the topic came from the last five weeks. We've said if. You, We've got a performance goal. People want to get stronger or fitter, or run further or run faster. But you, you can have, have a lot of clients who want to look better. And we've said five weeks in a row that most of that comes from the kitchen rather than the gym. So if you want to lose body fat, that's that's a diet thing rather than a training thing because you can't out-train a bad diet. That's the, that's the kind of cliche with that. So it's like, where do people start? How do people get their head around how to get get them started they're kind of like controlling their diet and the, the phrase you hear all the time on tv is part of a calorie controlled diet in it that's the kind of stock phrase you hear on on yeah control things so i think a lot of people will hear or go to calorie counting as their first challenge or the first way of trying to get out of their diet and i'm going to calorie count so i thought we could start off by going well what why would that be a good idea and it is it a good idea what are the weaknesses to it and is it for everybody? So I think the phrase we'll often talk about is it is the tool in the toolbox? Is it the right tool for you at the right time? So calorie counting, um, what is it? And why would you use it? Is, is kind of where we should start, really. Right, okay. So what so what we're saying is, Mark, if, if we're looking at it for everybody, it's when we're saying it starts in the kitchen, there, there's another massive thing now that there's plenty of on about. So we're on, when people are talking about a calorie deficit. Aren't we? So to to reduce body fat, you need you pretty much you need to be in a body a calorie deficit. So you need to be burning more calories than what you're taking in, don't we? Um, so 
like you said, how do we how do we go about getting into a calorie deficit and how do we know we're in a calorie deficit and how do you calorie count and is it even possible to well, yeah, most people, count? If, if you were to ask most people, they, want, they don't even know how many calories they should be eating per day, do they? No. Yeah. You know, like how uh, people have got no idea. If you, you couldn't just say to anybody who comes to the gym, right, work out your BMR and we'll take it and we'll work it from there. You know, like they wouldn't have a clue what you were telling. They won't even know what BMR stands for. Um, so asking somebody to work out how many calories per day, the, the people just eat, don't they? And they yeah. just get that balance. And, and or, they'll just, or they'll just say, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm doing 1,000 calories a day. That's yeah. all I'm doing. Or I'm, I've, been, I've been having 800 calories a day because this diet says so. Uh, We're just kind of going back to fundamental basics. What are calories and what, what is calorie yeah. deficit? And I, so I'll, I'll, I'll be the, the, the boring science teacher again. That's, that's kind of my job here. So a calorie is a unit. You got it. Yeah, I'm average. I talk a good game, but no, I mean being boring. I mean being boring. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Master yeah, of that. Yeah. Master yeah, of that. About being boring, man. So a calorie is a unit of energy. That, that's basically what it is. It's a it's a measure of how much energy is is in your food. Um, really, kind of law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is. Energy cannot be kind of created or not destroyed. It can only be conserved. So if you consume calories, you store that calorie. So that, that is basically why we calorie counting became a thing. Because if you're consuming two and a half thousand calories a day, for example, you will conserve that energy in different ways. You'll store it in your body in different ways. And unless you burn that energy, you convert that into some other form of energy movement, for example, you will have a, a surplus. You'll have more calories in than calories out. And your body will start that because we must conserve energy in all ways. And that gets started as fat. So, uh, or, or glycogen, but mainly fat. So that, that's basically why calorie counting is it's probably not a bad starting point. Because if you want to lose weight, you must know that your calories in, the amount of energy you're, you're consuming, is less than the calories you're burning off. So great, uh, great you mentioned their basic metabolic rate or BMR. So that's that's kind of a, an approximation, a measure of how much energy we burn just by being alive. That, that's not in moving around or exercise or anything like that, just by moving or just by being alive. How much it takes to sustain your body um, in homeostasis, just being alive. So, so the average male is from around about the 2,000, 2,200 mark, females maybe 1,500 to 1,800 calories per day just to maintain your existence. Now, that's different depending on your height, size your, your muscle mass so there's lots of in, individual differences but generally speaking we kind of most people around the area now that number goes up or goes down by um how active you are so if i take 2200 calories to keep me alive and i burn 500 by moving around all day if i have less than 2700 i should in theory lose weight and if i take more than that in theory i should gain weight so that's where calorie counting is it's about trying to have a, an idea about uh, are you in a balance, a net balance between how much you bring it in and how much you're using. Yeah. Def yeah, definitely. And I think that I think that's a big, you, just what you just spoke about there a little bit, uh, the, the BMR. A lot of people struggle getting their head around that, don't they? That every, if you laid in bed all day, Earl, and you didn't move out of bed, you would, let's say, like say, the average blow, you will still burn about 2,000 calories your brain function, your heart, your lung, everything, your BMR is your BMR at absolute, keeping you alive, basically, isn't it? Your yeah. basal rate, your basal metabolic rate. And that's why people get a bit confused sometimes when they exercise and they might only burn two or 300 calories and it's like, that is, and, but the struggle to get their head around, but we're burning calories 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all of your life. So that's why the nutrition side of it is really important, which I know we've spoke about a little bit before, haven't we? No, that's why no amount of exercise can make up for that bad diet, them extra calories, because it's so easy to put the calories in. You go into the gym and thinking you're doing 30 minute or an hour's workout is nowhere near. A, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a small drop in the ocean it, compared to the amount of calories that we burn through being alive, through the exercise part. So yeah. um, that's a big part of mentality, I think, is, is getting through to people that, the exercise isn't about burning calories. To being, more at, being more active. Being active throughout, yeah, day, yeah. throughout the yeah. day is way yeah. more important from that, from increasing your metabolic rate. Yeah. So, uh, that, so that, that's where, where calorie counting comes in. So what we then have to try and do, the protest or the act of calorie counting is 
is a lot of weighing and measuring and scanning barcodes. If you use my fitness pal to try and have a, a, an estimate of what you've taken in during that day. And I use the word estimate really carefully because you can't be precise. You can't know exactly 100% that you've taken in X number of calories because no, no, the manufacturing yeah. process, how you digest, like there's, there's lots of variability in terms of if you have a, a, like a loaf of bread out of, out of a, a slice of bread out of one loaf, each slice will have a slightly different calorie content than the next. Not by a lot, but imagine all those subtle little differences across the day. So we have an approximation. You never, never truly kind of there. So if you're calorie counting, reasonably speaking, a 500 calorie deficit is what you need to be confident that you've actually had a deficit. It might be only 200 calories deficit because of those subtle differences between how much um, calories in, in all the different things you've eaten that, that particular day. Yeah. And also, we, we can only guess what you need to burn in a day. We don't know for sure, for definite, that your basic metabolic rate is, and we definitely don't know for certain what you've actually burnt during exercise. So, again, these are all guesses. So the, my first kind of flaw with calorie counting as a principle is that it's guesswork. Now, it's guesswork based on relatively good science, but it's still guesswork. We don't know yeah. for definite that you've you've consumed X number of calories and you've burnt Y number of calories. And when the people start to yeah. get kind of concerned about that and then have really big deficits to make sure they've definitely got a deficit. So that, that's one of the, the kind of concerns about calorie counting for me. The other thing I, I tell about calories before we really get into the, the, the other nutrition strategies is, so, so I'm not about to say no, 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 I'm going to speak, but you carried on. No, no I'm not going to talk about you, mate. I like that. I told you it was going to be boring. No, no. Is the, no, thermic, no. the thermic effect of food. So not all calories are born equal. So not all calories are the same. So we think that a, a, a 500 calorie Mars bar is the same as a 500 calorie steak. And that's not the same. They are different. So fat, for example, for... Um, has nine calories per gram, okay? But you'll use about 0 to 3% of those calories taken in to digest that, that, that calorie. So if you take in nine, um, nine calories of fat, you're getting all of that fat into your body. Protein, on the other hand, up to 30% of the calories you take in from protein are spent digesting that calorie. So if you take in, say, nine calories of protein you might burn three of those just by digesting it so your calories in aren't necessarily the net calories in so the gross might be the same so if you add 500 calories of steak 500 calories of, uh, of chocolate you're going to keep 500 calories of chocolate that's that's going to be stored but you might burn 150 calories of that steak in just by digesting it. so it's actually net digesting. Net, yeah, net, yeah. a net gain of 350 so not all calories are equal. Again, this is where calorie counting has other drawbacks because we don't necessarily take into effect or take into account just how much calories we're burning by eating the food that we're eating. Yeah. So where are we? So we were, well, all I was going to say before was what about um, the really restricted calories when people go really heavy on it and go like we just said before the restricted maybe eight hundred thousand calories, five hundred calories. Sometimes we hear people talk about. Number one, our thing that with that is that it's not sustainable, is it? So there's no way you're living like that, is there? So it, it's about trying to find somewhere that you, you're getting to a point where you're learning. I mean, I suppose it goes to as habits. You get into your habits that you, you eat well the majority of the time, but you get to a point where you can eat well on a, a lower calorie intake than what you were when you were gaining weight, but some of that you can sustain, them, don't we? Um, and that's where you go into eating more, so we can talk about the more the calorie dense foods opposed to the, the less calorie dense foods. So that's like, so like you said before, a Mars bar or a Big Mac for the weight of the food and for what it gives you will have a hell of a lot more calories in it than what you would have if you had a big plate of veg, uh, roast vegetables with steak or chicken or fish. And um, so you've got, you, it's less calorie dense, isn't it? Yeah, so you're, really? you're getting more food, you're feeling like you're more satisfied. Whereas, I mean, you go, you have McDonald's, I could do five, five, oh, there's no, there's five there, Big Macs, yeah. easy. There's nothing just, to them. Apart from you, just, just a bit sickly, aren't they? But, 
you know, there, uh, there's no to them. You don't feel like you've had a... I've never felt like I've had a meal if I've had a burger. It's something to put you on before you have a meal. is a, is a McDonald's to me. The, <laughs> <laughs> but calorie-wise, the more than enough, the more than a meal. The more than, than, than yeah. meat, calorie-wise. If, if you ever see Mark in the drive through you know he's having his starter, not his main. It's just yeah, start. You know I'm on my way home from his tea <laughs> and I'm starving. I'm on my way home for a Sunday dinner. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, them little statistics there, you talk about protein, so yeah. the firmaject, so the... the energy that we use digesting protein what is it for carbs uh it's about 10 percent around about 10 percent yeah so right so so for the listeners so for our members even so we, when we run this little eight week we kind of really emphasize when we're doing these eight week little programs and they're not an eight week we don't run eight week programs to meet goals we do it as a kickstart to progress people on to the next stage so hopefully to, to create new habits basically that's as eight week programs are mainly that um, which we talked about the other day as well, didn't we? Um, so, but we talk about the importance of protein. So that is just a really simple way of putting that across, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like make sure you're kind of getting more of your daily calories from protein and that will help you hit your 500 calorie deficit. Well, if you're the, you've got more chance of it in your 500 calorie deficit if you are yeah. eating more I wanna, protein. I want to ask you one more thing about the carbs, Mark. Is there a difference then between like let's say getting your carbs from like your whole grains or like um, more natural foods compared to processed carbs. Is there a in difference? Terms, in terms of, the, I mean, I, I couldn't tell you the energy cost of, of um, so you've got right. complex and simple stacks. You've got sugars versus complex, like stacks. Yes. Thing. So you're going you're gonna to burn yeah. more calories digesting the more complex starches, your grains, uh, that kind of yeah. stuff. Because it takes longer to digest, whereas your simple ones, your high sugar content are going to take a little bit less because they're much quicker. So they may be like more like 5% yeah. than 10%. Uh, and the other thing to bear in mind about all the things you just mentioned there is, is that the, the missing piece of the puzzle, which is often ignored, but really important, especially when it comes to things like satiety, or kind of feeling full, which is fiber and water. So if you yeah. have a high... Well, I'm going to mention five of them yeah yeah so um one of the things you're going to get from those other foods as opposed to your, your kind of your more simple sugary type food is you're going to ingest a lot of fiber in the process so it's that that's one of the things that kind of slows down the digestion to make sure you're getting the value for your for your nutrients and it also adds to the volume of food but not necessarily to the calories so you might have a bigger plate of food but the calorie content doesn't jump up massively by having more starch, no, don't get me wrong, it's not veg. It's not like if you, you take in a massive pile of broccoli, you're gonna have to have a lot of it and you don't get a lot of calories. If you look at uh, like grains compared to like sugars, there's a clear difference. So um, yeah, there is a bit, but not a huge amount. Again, if you, basically, if you're taking in carbohydrates, I say something between five and 10% of the energy from that carb. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's taken up. So I, for me, I think you've got two energy sources, which are carbs and fats, and you can do muscle protein, which is your, your protein. Um, so if you're going to try and take in any kind of um, energy source, you're actually more efficient taking in carbohydrates than fat, but there's a whole other world of crap, which is insulin and blood sugar and responses to carbohydrates and all that kind of stuff, and then the positive thing, which is healthy, good fats. That's another topic for another day because we saw about calories today. So on a purely calorie point of view, carbs are a little bit better in terms of thermic effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But there, there is another set of issues to be dealt with another side about kind of the good things about having different types of fats as well. It's, it's all about balance though, Mark, isn't it really? This, this is the yeah. thing. So you don't want to be avoiding fat altogether. You don't want to be, you definitely don't want to be avoiding carbs altogether, especially when you consider that. You know, like in a, you know, like for calories, but because there's less calories in carbs than fats as well, isn't there? Which we didn't mention, you know, per gram. Oh, yeah. I was going to say we need to talk about calories. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's all them things to consider. But when people now there's there's a massive low carb thing, isn't there? You know, like it what Atkins now. What are we in now? Keto. Keto. Keto is the big one now, isn't it? So, you, I'm in I'm in ketosis. Uh, I, my body's in ketosis. I don't, you know, like I'm I'm burning fat and. I, uh, I I don't have carbs, but you know, the carbs are not to be. Yeah. The first rule of ketosis, you must always talk about ketosis. <laughs> yeah, well, we could, we could go on a Saturday, <laughs> and start alienating a lot more people. What were we on about then? 
So calories per gram of food, they are different, yeah. aren't they? Carbs, carbs and protein, we've got four calories per gram. So if you've got a plate of food with 100 grams of protein on it, let's say 100 gram chicken bread, let's say 100 gram of protein, 100 gram of carbs, you're getting 400 calories per portion yeah. out of you from your protein and your calories. If you have a 100 gram piece of fat, you are getting 900 calories. Yeah. So nine because so that's from a calorie point. If you yeah. are calorie counting, that is really important to be aware of what you're eating in it, where you where you're getting your energy from, really, because that yeah. makes a massive difference. It's the same size, same size portion, but calorie wise, it, they are very different. That's what I kind of mentioned at the beginning. So yeah. people need to be aware of that. So if we just double back to what we we start off with, calorie counting. So where where do we sit? Yeah. So for me. I think if you watch some of the, these kind of diet programs on TV, you kind of realize people just don't have a clue about how much calories are in certain things. So if you if you have somebody who has no clue about diet and nutrition, it's not a bad place to start. Just as a tool to create some awareness about what, what kind of calories are in what kind of foods and actually realize that that piece has got like 5,000 calories in it. I have seen yeah, it's a, it's a great start, mate. For most people, it's a great start, and it, and and the app, like you said, the My Fitness Pal, and our yeah, app that we use, it spoke really, about that, didn't we? yeah, people yeah. have like come back to us and they've gone, oh my god, I've never eat, I, I've been eating so and so for years, and I've scanned it in back, and I can't believe how many calories and stuff is in it, and how, so it, it is. They are good, but it's as a bear, like you said, yeah. as a as a beginner tool to get people to understand. I I'm pretty sure now. I could take a plate of pretty much any food and have a rough estimate how many calories are in. Because I have scanned and I have logged so many different foods to get an idea of how many calories are in. You'd be able to estimate. Yeah. Estimate. You'd be able to what estimate. did I say? He said he'd tell you. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't say I'd tell you exactly. <laughs> I didn't. Look at calories of bonds. I can look at that food and I'll tell you how many I'd calories guess, are in there. I'd roughly estimate. Calorie rain man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it but it is good to to understand. We we all need this is the thing with it all, and you, you you need to be you need to be able to look at a plate of food and think I'm getting enough protein from that meal. There's probably about right part right amount of carbs, and I'm getting some yeah. veg, and I'm getting um me fiber and and the other things in there. It's um, down to portion yeah. size then. It, it does. It's understanding portion size. I think that's what cal calorie counting initially with, with your yeah, apps really give you a rough idea. Don't they? So that, that's that's the yeah. kind of next level that you mentioned there about understanding macros. So for for again anybody that isn't familiar with with diet and nutrition, so macros, your macronutrients are the three broad categories mentioned so far. So fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So all of us, I think, would advocate for a more high protein diet. Um, and we can get into kind of a macros and zone diets and that, that kind of stuff and what the balance is in other episodes. But calorie count is a good start. One of the, the, the downsides, and Greg, you just mentioned it there, is it's a lot of hard work, isn't it? Because you have to weigh and measure everything and scan barcodes in, and it puts you off eating foods that aren't scannable or measurable. You, know, you don't want to go eat out or go here, go there, because you can't, I can't put on my kitchen scales and, and exactly measure how much of what I've had and, so it, it's, it's a short-term tool, but it's a, it can be an absolute pain to do. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't do it anymore. I, I just can't be bothered. And people forget, don't, don't they? They forget, yeah. they do one meal and then forget to put other one in. It's like yeah. they're busy, they've grabbed some and they do whatever, and then it's all over the place and they don't know what it is. But when you said yeah. that about you don't put food in, for it, it's just a bit of a funny story. We went out. <laughs> we went out... Um, a few weeks ago, Wakefield Trinity's first home game, um, and we went out. Yeah, and we, had a, no, we had a few beers, anyhow, but we went for something to eat after. There were eight of us blokes. We went for something to eat after, and one of like one of the blokes over there trains here, and he's been calorie, he's been using app to calorie count, and he and he says, you know what I'm dreading about this meal. I'm not going to be able to scan my food. I don't know what I'm going to... <laughs> what, what am I going to put into app <laughs> for my phone? I said, put same as what you just put in for your 10 pints of Carlin if you want. So it'll be the same sort of thing. But it, 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 it did it as a joke, but that is... It's a it's a real you thing, isn't it? To be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very funny at time. I don't know about grab pissing myself over here. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> it was really funny at the time. I apologise. I didn't tell it well. I'm usually really good at telling jokes and stories. Yeah. Off camera. As you'll get to know. Off camera. Um, yeah, I'm better off camera. So we, we kind of uh, 
coming to the end of, of the 30 minutes, in terms of, of Callow County, going back to, to my good old bit of science, from a thermodynamics point of view, if you're taking in less calories than you're burning, you will lose weight. But I think what we're saying here is it's not the optimal way, not the best way. And there are much more effective ways of doing it than simply looking at how many calories come in, how many calories go out. And we can, we can talk about those in, in other episodes. But for somebody who is, is, is new to this um, and, and just starting out, it's, it's not a bad place to start. It certainly creates a lot of awareness. It's a really good way of learning. And the other thing it does for me as well is it, it kind of highlights snacking calories. Things you don't, things you don't realize are kind of creeping into your cat into, into your diet, and a lot, I think a lot of people will be around about neutral, and it's those snacking calories that put them into the surplus. Until yeah. you start logging it and, cal- and counting those calories, you don't realize just how many kind of calories you just don't need. I don't want. I, I had that because well, just, it was just there, so I did. You didn't want it. it wasn't a meal. You didn't feel hungry, and I just kind of consumed those. And three, four, five hundred calories later, you in in the surplus and. You've you've now identified yeah. in your life where where there are opportunities to make make some gains by by going through that maybe for one or two weeks that going through that process. Yeah, but, but it can just be a real eye opener, can't it? Mm. End of day, you know, like like you said, just, just so if you're a, a basic understanding of calories is not a bad thing to have, is it? No, no. I like you say we we haven't really talked about it, but, but Mark mentioned their portion sizes. So how many people will tell you they eat healthily and they list the types of foods they're eating going, yeah, you're right. You're eating the right things. Then you see the kind of the, the plate size and it kind of heaped up three times high. Um, yeah. And going, yeah. Yeah. You've got 5,000 calories of really healthy food. It's still 5,000 calories. Yeah. It, but it's still 5,000 calories. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Still, yeah, yeah I no, think we all good. just, quick, it goes on, this goes on to another topic altogether that we go on. I think in, in this country, we've got massively into getting your portion um, and how you portion your plate up so wrong. There's a healthy eating plate, I think, which is like your government guidelines stuff, but not many people. When you look at it, there's, you know, like people have bolognese, for example, which isn't a bad meal to have. There's, there's no wrong with having a bolognese, but it will be a massive portion of pasta and it will be a little bit of meat on mm. top and there's no veg on it. No, you know, there's no extra veg on there. Is the word that you could quite easily reduce your pasta. Yeah. You could increase your protein, and you could have more of the more meat into, you know, a higher meat content in there, and you could even chuck on some veg. If you like us in our house, it's generally accompanied by garlic bread. Yeah, so garlic, bread. Garlic. To our, our garlic. So bread. garlic bread. So, leave it. so then we're talking carbs on carbs. We double, we double carb in our. Have a carb sandwich, please. Sandwich. I mean. <laughs> it's like a crisp sandwich. It's carb on carb. It's just, it's um, yeah. So it says it's getting, it's getting it right. It's how you, it's how you set your plate up in it. But you know, it's like, cause like we said, we're we're all in the, well, we're in agreement on it all. But you know, the protein plays such a massive role in, in where people are going for the, if they're wanting to achieve the goals, improving the body composition, protein, you know, protein. It's, it's spread about a lot. There's plenty of people talking about it, and but there's gen, but there's good reason. Yep, so I think that in next, our next kind of nutrition episode, I think we're going to, by that sound, look at the role of, of a high-protein diet in, in weight loss and th- that kind of approach. So that could be our and next. Body comp- yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that'll be a good one. That'll be really good just to delve a bit deeper. Yeah, that's the, uh, I think that's the end of, of today's topic. So uh, Awesome. Yeah. Um, so thank you for listening. Please like us on podcasts, which is Spotify and Apple. Follow us, subscribe to us, leave comments on YouTube. We're all over Twitter, Instagram. So uh, all over it, all Everywhere. over it. Uh, we're nearly influencers, I think. I don't think we have any influencers. <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked us today if we've got sponsorship yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have you been contacted by a sponsor? <laughs> no, no. We, we need a flat cap company, don't deal. we? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're yeah, we're, we're all out for a big cap. deal. Yeah, well, yeah. Alison, but she's listening to them all. We'll give Alison a shout out for listening to yeah, all the yeah. podcasts. She'll be listening to We have to our first five, five episode yeah. listener. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so please yeah. share the word, let, get it out there, retweet us, uh, let people know they're out there, and we'll see you all next week. Quale. Thank you for watching this episode with Yorkshire Fitness Podcast. If you like this, please follow us on Instagram at Yorkshire Fitness Podcast and on Twitter, the Yorkshire Fit Pod. Please give us a review, rating, comment or subscribe to us on the channel and you can share when we tweet our content so other people can benefit from 
all the wonderful things we've talked about today. And we'll see you again next time.